Welcome to the Ben and Lauren Show. I'm Ben, and here's Lauren, and it is Monday, Monday night. night. <laughs> what day is it again? <laughs> so, um, welcome to our new reality. <laughs> well, what's interesting is our life has not changed that much. It really has not changed hardly at all. We, um, we're home anyway. There are many days that our car sits in the driveway or in the garage without going anywhere, so... It's just a little bit more restrictive than usual. We've uh, been to the grocery store a couple times already. Uh, the very first time, actually the last time I, w- we went together and then I went to a fruit store right before the craziness started. It was on Jenny's birthday. Mm-hmm. We went and we bought Ben's sister on March 3rd. We went and bought her a birthday cake. Yeah, we got it from a nice kind of fruit markety kind of place. And at that time, we didn't all go in because our kids were all sniffly. Now, interestingly enough, I came home with a giant roast. <laughs> oh, yeah, you went You went a couple days later. That's right. I, I came home with a giant roast. A uh, New York strip. It was a New York strip, and it was literally the day before the big... That was a Thursday. The big rush to the grocery stores. I was just one day ahead. They had a big sale, so Ben bought a whole... You know, we... We kind of have some of our food budget we watch for stuff like that and allows us to get steak. Otherwise, we would never have steak. But they were selling it, what was it, for $4 a pound? Something like that. Less than what you bought the hamburger for today. <laughs> and that's another story. But it was uh, it was the day before the big, uh, the big rush on the grocery stores. So schools in Michigan were all closed the next day. And when that happened, everybody got scared and went to the grocery store. And we really... We had a pretty good incentive that our power-hungry governor was going to make sure that she took every little ounce of control she could of our life. So, Lauren, you went the following day just to see what, scope it out to see what was going on. So the next Friday afternoon, this would be what, March It'd be a week ago? or so, 15th? I don't remember. I have no clue of what day <laughs> was which. It was the first Friday that we were locked down. We've been completely locked down for two weekends and a week in between. So the Friday... This is the 10th day. Not last Friday, but the Friday before that. So we heard that everything had been locked down. And we've been trying to keep our pantry in pretty good shape since, I would say, January or so. Yep. We started hearing that there was stuff going on, and we got a little concerned then. And We took inventory of our pantry and said, let's fill in the gaps. We decided to make sure that the pantry and the refrigerator and everything kind of stayed full as much as possible. Normally, we go about three weeks between grocery shopping. We went quite a bit before the big So we started doing push. once a week grocery shopping to make sure everything stayed up. So our We usually try to do once a month grocery shopping. So that Friday, a lot for us. That Friday when everything got shut down... Um, we had plenty of stuff, but I thought that it would be really instructive to go to the grocery store and just me so that I'm not too concerned about catching anything at this point in time. Basically, I have to get bathed in cold germs around here for about two weeks or three weeks before I actually get sick. My immune system is very high at the moment. <laughs> so I thought it would be interesting to go and it would be very instructive to see what people do when they are worried. So, what did they eat? What did they buy? What what goes out of stock? So Lauren came back. I gave her my phone, and she came back with a whole bunch of pictures. And she gave me her testimony, the the report, and it was uh, it, it was, was stunning. It was absolutely fascinating. It was there was two things that I would take away from that. One, we live in an area where there's there's a pretty large minority community. Um all around us so we we pretty much have a real large mix of people you've got um you've got a lot of uh black people and you have a lot of so they've been here for a long time but they've got a very distinct culture of their own separate from you know a lot of the irish german polish white immigrants from this area which are usually third or fourth generation at this point like us and then you've got a lot of people who are direct immigrants. We have Indians and Pakistanis and Chaldeans and... Well, when you went, what did you see primarily? What I saw primarily... Filipinos, that was, that's the other group of people we have around here. Primarily the people who came out first were both P- 
people kind of more of our background and of the black people in the area. And they had very distinctive cultural differences to how they were approaching this grocery shopping. (laughs) (laughs) And I have, you know, I've shopped here my whole life. I've lived here my whole life. We've been a melting pot. I have never seen the cultural differences so clearly as I saw that day. Um, There was a lot of people shopping who clearly don't shop large amounts of food at any one time. And I think a lot of people shopping who aren't used to cooking for themselves. Yeah, you were kind of glancing at, at shopping carts to get an idea of what people were buying. Right. I was, besides, I, I was curious. Besides toilet paper. Every single person in the store had a package of toilet paper to the point where I even was tempted to get a package of toilet paper. But I had taken inventory and we had enough for quite a while because we buy it when it's on sale and we'll stock it up for quite a while when it does that. And we had just done that. So I did not buy any, even though I was tempted to, because I thought we don't need it and it's not right to do. And I thought, it's just a, it's a mental exercise. Don't do what everyone else is doing just for the sake of doing it. And sometimes that is an exercise. It, it was a surprisingly hard one. Mm-hmm. Not to pick up a package of toilet paper. <laughs> it's like, why is everyone buying toilet paper? <laughs> um, but people bought toilet paper and they bought ready-made food items. Uh, all the rice roni products had already been cleaned out of the store. Now, given this has only been like three or four hours since we've had this announcement that things are closing down. Uh, it was it was what happened was we had our first positive test in Michigan. So we had one person <laughs> <laughs> tested and everything shut down. Now we found out that there was a positive test in the hospital real close to our house. No, that person died. We had a person who died of coronavirus like within what 10 minute 10 miles of our house? Less than that even. It's got to be someone from this area. Yeah. It's, it's in our local, ho- the person died at our local hospital. And that's the hospital we've been to. I mean, not yeah. recently. But yeah, it's a little disconcerting to see pictures of that in the news. But what are you going to do? I'm sure that they've had multiple people die of flu in that hospital in the past few weeks also. People die in that hospital all the time. We just don't know about it. We don't know about it. And they die of the flu. They die of and flu A. Norovirus. Right now. They die of... Oh. In our area, we are suffering a huge spike of influenza A. So we have a lot of people sick in our area, coughing and sneezing, and you wouldn't know the difference. But anyway. But we are healthy. How about that? Well, How often do we do these Ben and Lauren shows and talk about illnesses and sicknesses? And But we are healthy. We're all doing great. So that was... The experience at the grocery store was really illuminating as to what people were taking, mm-hmm. what people were buying, people's attitudes... Um, a lot of canned stuff. They were going after fruit. All the canned fruit. It was all gone. But not the vegetables. Not, but fresh produce was all there. Fully <laughs> stocked. You'd watch people walk in with a cart and this wild look in their eye and they'd go straight through the produce aisle. They wouldn't buy a single thing except potatoes. <laughs> all the potatoes and the sweet potatoes. And it figures because I had just been planning to go to the store to get sweet potatoes to start our own sweet potatoes for the garden. Yeah, we were a little were bit disconcerted out. that all of the sweet potatoes were gone um, because it's planting time. Normally, we just buy a bag of sweet potatoes from the grocery right, store. Right, that'd be easy. But now, fast forward to today, I went to the grocery store uh, solo and brought home a whole bunch of sweet potatoes. So now we have to start them. I also got, um, I got grow mats for those. Because we've had some difficulty germinating our seeds. They tend to get a little too cold, mm-hmm. and then they, um, then they rot instead of germinating, and that's no good. So we've got, we've got one thing that give us a leg up on our garden this year. So it's basically a heating mat that helps the seeds germinate. I, my understanding is it's a lower heat than like a heating pad, which I thought about using, but mm-hmm. it, it has a, it's a wider surface and has a lower heat, so it wouldn't get it so hot. I think that the one we have would pretty much cook our seeds. Maybe we can put that in our bed in, in the winter time. Well, plus you have to run it for days. Yeah. So you want a real low level heat. Perfect for a bed. Our bed. <laughs> put heating <laughs> grow mats in the bed. <laughs> It'd help us grow. <laughs> you need to grow? <laughs> anyway. So yeah, Ben came home with sweet potatoes today. That was a that was a nice treat. And I came home with lots of green veggies, beans and turnips and carrots again the grocery store was pretty broccoli clean, except 
lots of fresh produce. Yeah, all the fresh produce was there. But <laughs> and it, I noticed that they are packaging it so normally you would have like a pile of green beans and you'd go get a bag and you'd get a you know, selection of green beans. Today it's all packaged in cartons. Everything's in cartons. Yeah, everything's nothing's exposed to the air. They don't want people sneezing on it. Or putting their hands on it. Or touching it. You just pick up a package and that's what you get. Yep. So. And uh, everything I touched, I put in the cart. And I also was very careful. I put things in bags. I didn't just throw them in the cart. Hmm. I put them in bags. I, you know, I probably should have put some gloves on. You know, like the little uh, latex gloves. But that doesn't work because what? See, the thing about any illness, everything is transferable. Right, but so the idea, you, though, is that then I can take the gloves off, and if I touch my face, I'm not going to get anything. It's protection for me, not protection for anyone else. Okay, so what about all the stuff that you brought in from the grocery store? Yeah, I, I walk in, and the very first thing I did is I washed my hands, and Lauren says, Ben, you're bringing in all the stuff from the grocery store anyway. <laughs> I mean, anything you touch. But I said, you know, my fingers touched a lot more than that fruit. That, but you, you know. just said that they didn't. No, if I were wearing gloves, it wouldn't. But I was just wearing my, you know, I had my fingers bare. My point is that I was walking around touching the, you know, the handle of the shopping cart, touching the, you know, the, the number pad on the, for the, you know, for checkout. You're touching stuff all the time. You can't really avoid it. So my no. point is... See, I live with this normally because I'm normally a germaphobe and my mind goes all these places and I've just settled that there's certain things you handle and then you wash your hands and it's really weird <laughs> to watch everybody else going bonkers and doing what to my mind is totally irrational stuff that is not going to protect you in any way and then doing other stuff like um, licking their fingers when they're counting <laughs> money while they're working. <laughs> I know. It's, it's crazy. People have no clue how sicknesses work. Just no clue. <laughs> None. Do we know how sicknesses work? Well, I think I've spent a lot more time thinking about it to the point where I've examined behavior that works and doesn't work. For for instance, you'll, you'll hear people will, will, will expose you to whatever it is they have and they'll say, well, I just won't breathe on you. <laughs> it's like... It's like I'm That's really not, not concerned with your breathing. I'm concerned about the fact that you're touching all kinds of things and your thing, everything that you could leave behind is on your hands. You touch surfaces. I might touch one accidentally and then I end up swallowing those germs. So like people are going bonkers about not touching their face. But everyone touches their face. It's like... You get a, you get a itch on your face, you scratch it, you don't even think about it. I think people don't understand the purpose of that or what it means or anything. But it is true that if I'm in an area, in a situation where I'm concerned about sicknesses, I keep my hands very away from my eyes, my nose, my ears, anything like that. But I've done that for years. It's I like don't. second nature. <laughs> I don't pay any attention to it. I mean, not at home. Oh, I'm you're talking about when you're out I'm and about. I'm very aware of it when I'm out and about. When I went to the grocery store, I kept my distance from just about everybody. I mean... There was at least three to six feet at all times. And uh, I did not touch anything unnecessarily. Any produce I brought home. What are you laughing at? I don't know. I feel like people, it's like, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, I'm not normally conscious of it. The feeling I got, um, I saw a lot of people with masks on today. Yeah, up until now, no one's been wearing them. I saw a lot of people with masks on. I think it just makes people feel better. They're playing the part. So there must be a cue somewhere in the media telling people to start wearing your masks. Yeah, they're showing pictures of people with masks in like Times Square and, and in famous places. And of course, constant pictures of people from Asia, but they wear masks all the time anyway. There's, that's a cultural thing they believe that keeps people from getting sick. Maybe it'll become a cultural thing here. I hope not because it's distracting. I don't think it's all that useful because you see people like that in China all the time and somehow these really terrible <laughs> illnesses keep coming out of there all the time. No, uh, Yeah, they don't seem to pre prevent it, do they? Doesn't seem to be helping. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not racist I don't know. I, to observe. <laughs> I, I got some uh, looks at me just because I wasn't wearing a mask and maybe I looked a little different. I, I don't know. I just. Oh. Next time, look at the person and say, is something wrong? I also had a fuller shopping cart than most of the people there. And I think that might have been what some of the looks were for. 
people have gotten really very judgmental about other people hoarding, quote unquote. And you know, people are not used to shopping for a family of seven. Mm-hmm. I know some people, I have a friend who has who's <laughs> shopping for a family of 11 right now. A normal shopping trip looks like hoarding. <laughs> it, and they, she's gotten, people swear at big family shoppers in the grocery store, not realizing that that person shopping is shopping for a very large family, four times the size of the one that they're used, that other people are used to shopping for. And just because you only see one person, it's because that family is deliberately trying to keep only one person at the store to protect everybody else and themselves. So if you see a person with a grocery cart loaded with 10 gallons of milk. Well, in our case, two gallons of milk. The person with 10 gallons of milk is probably not hoarding the 10 gallons of milk. Most normal people can't go through 10 gallons of milk in a week, and they wouldn't buy that even if they were hoarding. If you see that, (laughs) it's probably a big family, and that's their weekly supply of milk. So uh, there's no limitation on what you can buy except uh, meat. You can only buy two packages of meat, two dozen eggs, and two milks. And I think that was all the restrictions that they had. Well, they were cleaned out of milk for a week. Yeah, they had milk back in stock. They didn't have any restriction on bread, which I thought was interesting. Well, that's probably why their bread was all cleaned out. Well, they probably would need one on bread pretty soon. Yeah. The bread was just gone. I I actually think, I know a lot of people have been talking about other people being selfish and buying all this stuff, but there's a dynamic that isn't often thought about. Most people, at least in our area, do not spend a lot of time in their homes. I mean, when I went shopping today, I was shopping for nine people. Think yeah, about it. We were we made, we've been trying to make sure we get stuff for mom and dad next door, so they're so not in the, gr- in the our whole store. family of seven plus two more people. Right. So I mean, it was a full shopping cart. It was to the point where, by the time I got to the bottled water, I didn't I wasn't going to buy any anyway, but I couldn't have fit it in my cart. Mm-hmm. I had no place to put it. That is probably why you were getting looks. People see a guy there by himself and figure you're just buying everything you feel like buying yeah i'm guessing that's why i got some looks because i'm just a a guy i should have just like had a sign up saying i'm shopping for my family i think everybody's gonna need a sign because i've heard multiple stories you need a t-shirt saying i shop for nine people yeah it's like i i needed to have a sign explaining <laughs> i am the it. designated shopper <laughs> but you know if someone looked in the cart it was a variety of things i didn't buy just a ton of one thing and it was, it, yeah, and it was a, it was a pretty good shopping. And trip. a lot of, gro- a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, you know. I don't know. <laughs> These are just all observations. The shopping is really the biggest change for us. Um, none of us is on any prescription medication. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard that that's. We don't go out to eat. We, we don't, don't go to movies. We don't go. Oh yeah, that's where I was going with this story. People don't live in their houses. Right. They get up in the morning. They go to school and to work. They, I mean, they're not home using the bathroom. They're not home cooking meals. They're not even home taking showers sometimes. People shower at the gym. So a lot of people experience life where their home is basically a place that they sleep and watch TV in. So they keep snacks in the refrigerator. And some people cook dinner, but a lot of times dinner is takeout most of the Mm -hmm. time. Or they eat out, or they go out after dinner, or they go to movies, or there's just all this stuff that's going on, and people are not used to being at home all day, cooking all their meals at home, doing all their work at home, having all their kids at home. It's just they really aren't used to it, and I think the grocery stores aren't stocked to reflect that either, because that's not people's normal shopping pattern. They don't shop yeah. like we do. And we've known about just-in-time um, shopping, you know, mm-hmm. the shop, the inventory, and we know it does not take much to clean out a grocery store. Right. I remember one time going to Kroger after a big weekend, and I was shocked how many holes were in the, you know, things that just that were missing. Mm-hmm. And that was just a weekend. It wasn't even anything special. Mm-hmm. And it's because of just just in time. It takes maybe about twenty four to forty eight hours to get fully stocked back up again after a big rush. And if you have more than one day worth of a rush in a row, Mm -hmm. then things will get completely wiped out and you can't even get them back in stock at all. They've got to be the grocery stores. This has got to be really rough. Although... The one by us has been keeping up remarkably. They've been handling it remarkably well. They've been cheerful. 
They've been doing really well. And they've been working very hard to keep inventory up and stocked. People were working everywhere. Well, unlike a lot of people, they are likely to keep their jobs through all of this and end <laughs> up with a really good quarter. <laughs> I'm sure job security is Job security great. in the grocery store industry is not that bad right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I, that to us, that's the biggest impact we felt is the, the shopping situation is something we actually have to plan for and take care of differently than we normally would. Right. Even so, there is no shortage, really. The chickens haven't quit laying eggs. The cows haven't quit getting milk. We don't have a corrupt government that is taking all of it. Well, we might have a corrupt government, but... We don't have a government that's taking all the milk. Thankfully. And giving it all to their family and not allowing anything for anybody else. We have a semi-free market. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A mostly free market. A mostly free market. (laughs) So, it's been, um, I would say that it's been more mentally challenging than physically challenging for us. We are not used to being yeah, we don't bombarded have, with this level of fear. We don't have a TV, but we have Facebook. And in some ways, that could be even Internet. more alarming. Internet, yeah. And we listen to podcasts and other things to get people's perspectives on things. And it's, um, it can be tiring sometimes. It's very exhausting because this is pulling out the conspiracy theorist in all of us. Oh, yeah. And the conspiracies are such a wide spectrum. Sure. Everybody agrees that we're not being told the truth. But what is the truth then? But it varies between we're not being told the truth, this isn't really all that bad, and there's a deeper agenda at work, to this is more awful than anybody's telling you and we're all going to die and nobody's telling you that either. And this isn't really a virus. This is a product of other issues, other environmental issues going on. This was a bioengineered terror weapon that, Just that leaked goes out. On and on. It is incredible the amount of fearful stuff just being slung around at all opportunity. Now, we did have, I, I did have one thing I finally got completed that I've wanted to do pretty much last summer. Our, and I've, I Are think we going to wrap up what we were talking about and move well, on to that? Well, what, what, did you have a final thought on the, on the... Well, a little bit of a final thought. The final thought was what we're seeing in the grocery store, what we're seeing sitting at home, is, is an immense mental exercise in setting aside fear mm-hmm. and setting aside all the possibilities of what could be and dealing with what is. And making reasonable preparation for what could come. There's a saying, uh, you cannot manage what you cannot control. And the instinct is to try to control more and more and more and more. Right. And sometimes you do things that are out of control that need to be in control. You need to address that. But there's a lot of factors that are completely outside of our hands. Especially if you listen to economists. Oh, my goodness. That's so far removed from your ability to do anything about it that... The best we can do is to prepare for reasonable scenarios. And we are taking this very seriously if anyone has any doubts about not going anywhere. But we do that normally. Like I said, flu A is extremely bad right now in our area. Well, I have a a greater concern for other things than the virus, for sure. I definitely do. I have concerns. The viruses are not, this is not the scariest scenario in this picture. The economics, the logistics of people panicking, those kind of things are way more concerning. But I was, I was ultimately thinking that being bombarded with just the level of, of invitation to be afraid mm-hmm. is what is most difficult about this whole thing. It, it is the mental capacity to set it aside and say what comes will come let's take what we have right now let's be content with where we are right now and do not be afraid that's the big thing is do not be afraid and i know on facebook i've been un not unfollowing i guess it is unfollowing well i i've muted some people for a little while just because i can't just because of mentally the... handle that right now just because of the comments that are that are on there, it's like there's no stability. 
you know. The instability is huge. The instability. And um, even if I don't disagree with what they're saying, it's like, whoa. <laughs> right. So uh, I did finish a project that I've been working on for or Speaking thinking about. Speaking of mental stability and feeling a little more like something you can control. So if you've watched any other Ben and Lauren shows, if you've been keeping up with uh, all last summer, I kept talking about putting this fence together. And little by little, piece by piece, the fence was put together. One half was done. The other half was mostly done but it was wide open because there's no gate. So finally, uh, Sunday, I got out there and I finished the gate. So we have a completed fence. Yep. Well, there might be a little touch up, so we do the, the pillars are sticking up out of the ground. Yeah, you gotta get, it. there's a few little details on it, but uh, for the most part, it is completed. There's privacy, it opens, it shuts, it performs its function. And now when you're on the side of the house, it is enclosed. <laughs> I'm happy about that because Daniel has a habit of going out in front. And there's been a few times the last several months that he has wandered. He has no idea, by the way. He's going to go out one summer and just like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Where did this come from? Well, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, two or three months ago, one of our neighbors um, escorted him back. He was down at the corner. And... To That's my knowledge, he had been in the backyard, but he, and he had been in the backyard for quite a while. He decided he was going to go out in front and take a walk. So That's bad news. Yeah. It requires just looking away for a few minutes when you your child has contentedly been in one spot for a long time. So having the fence closed is very welcome. And he is not afraid of wandering no. far away. I mean... Elena used to be like that, though, and she's no longer like that. She's no. reliable now. We've We've caught her enough times and drilled into her enough times that she can't do that. She doesn't do it. Yeah. She's very reliable about where she goes. That's good. So, you finish the fence. Someday Daniel will be too. Now we don't have to worry about Rebecca walking out. <laughs> I'm sure she's, <laughs> she's right next. behind. She's next. Rebecca's trying to sit up by herself and I think she's getting a new tooth. And she learned how to drink water out of a cup. That's pretty good for four months old. Almost five. Okay, five months old. She's just about five months. Oh, and she discovered food. Oh, yes. She has discovered that we eat things and that things taste good. Graham crackers are good and <laughs> apples are good. Not necessarily from us feeding her food. Just she watches everybody else eating and I let her have a piece of apple to chew on. I usually do that about five months when they start. <laughs> no teeth, but... She licks it a lot. <laughs> Well, is there anything else we want to cover in the... Well, we uh, talked about our garden. We um, finished cutting our fruit trees down, which is oh, a little yeah. sad, but it means we have lots of extra garden space now. Mm -hmm. Hey, we are very incentivized to plant our garden. We're going to have a good garden this year. We got our we got a small collection of Baker Creek seeds. Um, we're probably going to plant less heirlooms this year because we're still working on amending the soil in our garden. And it's got some serious issues with blights and funguses and yeah. not enough nutrients to help the heirloom plants. We're still building really up the fruit. We're still building it up. So I think this year we're probably going to grow some non heirloom like tomatoes. Just because We're gonna cut back on cucumbers this year. Yeah, we like cucumbers, <laughs> but we don't need forty five quarts of pickles. We might not even do a zucchini this year. We usually do a no, zucchini. We're not gonna do a zucchini. It takes up too much room. I'd like to try some carrots. And I only get one zucchini at a time because we always have borers get into the vines. We've got. I like the turnips. Those. Turnips are good. Oh yeah, we made pickled turnips and um, eat those over regular pickles, and they're way more. They're actually way more nutritious. I don't like the beets. That's the only thing I don't like. I don't know if I want to do beets this year. I have to plant a few so I can do the turnips. Oh, I see. They've got to be pink. <laughs> it's not right if they're not pink. You know the pink little pickled uh, turnips that you get when you go to Mediterranean restaurants? That's what we uh, learned how to make, and they are really good. By the way, if you didn't know that those are turnips, those pink things that you get, those are turnips, and they're canned with a few slices of beets, and that's why they are bright pink. <laughs> yep. Oh, and it goes so good with uh, Mediterranean Almost food. Almost everything. But Hummus, baba ganoush. They go really well on sandwiches. They're just really good. So I definitely want to plant turnips. Mm-hmm. And the focus of our garden, we've gradually, um, we've put the focus more and more clearly on things that we can grow, that we will save, that we eat, and that are Beans. nutritious. Beans. 
We really, it turns out everybody in our family really likes canned green beans. We eat beans. So green mm -hmm. beans are a, are definitely worth it. Right. We don't do peppers that much. Yeah, we don't eat very many peppers, and certainly not the hot peppers. The kids don't want to eat any and of them. And we've never really had a big, pr like a big produce of like green peppers or... Those natapinos that we got last year, though, I canned those and I've been using them. The natapinos are good. Those are great because I can put a whole can of those in our chili and the flavor is all there and the, the kids don't complain about how hot we it is. We use our herb garden a lot. Our herb garden is, is heavily used. We use our herb garden a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun getting a nice collection of... But I was going to say, our, our Baker Creek order came in. We Aha. got Baker Creek heirloom seeds, but we... I was, I was saying that I didn't want to do a lot of heirloom vegetables this year because we're having trouble getting them to produce till our dirt is better, but... Lauren's got the props today. <laughs> <laughs> we have chamomile, mm -hmm. which this is, a, this is a, I think, a Polish variety, and I've tried planting the German variety. We drink a lot of chamomile tea. We do, and I have... Almost every I'd night. I'd like to get it going. We also got an Israeli cucumber plant. That'll be fun. Which, um, it's one of those kind with a real smooth skins. This is not really for pickling. This is just for eating. So I think I'm probably going to not do so many pickles this year. We'll just yeah, we're them. skipping the pickles. This is called Agastachi, and it's beautiful. And I got this because we have hummingbirds. Oh, it's a tractor. And this is going to be a hummingbird attractor. Also, it's very good for pulling pollinators into the garden. The more pollinators you've got in the garden, the more fruit you're likely to get. It's kind of like mint, my understanding is, that you make tea out of it. It's a tea herb. We also got, uh, this was their free thing. It's called Chinese chives. <laughs> and they look... I guess they have sort of a garlicky flavor, and they look more like grass than usual chives. So that'd be interesting to have that. Um, this one I'm kind of excited about. This is a popcorn variety. It's called strawberry popcorn. Sounds like popcorn. And <laughs> it only grows about four feet tall, and it produces little tiny popcorn heads, and it says it's ideal for a real sm kind of small garden planting. And we've got a, a space all along the fence where we could probably get little popcorn plants in. And if we're not trying to eat it like regular sweet corn, this could actually be fun to have. And my last and my favorite, and this is what I'm really looking forward to trying, these are called lychee tomatoes. And they have about a five foot tall plant with thorns on it. And they grow something like a grape tomato. But what's really intriguing about these is apparently they have a really strong cherry flavor to the point where you can put them in a pie like a cherry pie and it tastes like cherry pie. So we're going to make a straw, we're going to basically make a tomato, tomato pie. cherry pie. If I get enough of these, I guess they're also really good in salad. They've got a really nice flavor for salad. And I These are not real tomatoes though. I've, I've never heard of a tomato with they thorns. They are a tomato they variety. Are? Yes, they are. Interesting. So they are related to tomatoes. Lychee tomatoes. So I'm really looking forward to, to seeing if we can get those to bear us some fruit because that would be really interesting if the lychee tomatoes grow, uh, especially if they make a good pie. That would be just really fascinating. So I'm hoping to start some of this stuff this week, um, but mostly the heirlooms Tomato were, pie. I... I so we've been working a lot on the amending the soil, very working very hard getting it... Uh, and expanding our garden beds and making them organized and neat. Mm -hmm. We so. basically took all of our leaves, actually I put the uh, cardboard down, covered it up with the leaves, and then I put down ironite over the whole yard mm -hmm. and uh, fertilizer. Our nitrogen levels are really low. They are. And I thought it was interesting, the ironite actually has a probiotic in it. Well that might be helpful. It's for the soil. So it's going to, I think it's going to help things out quite a bit. And we have many bales of straw this year that we did not have last year. So we've got good mulch in hand, which mm -hmm. we did not. Plus now we don't have the trees, so they aren't going to be sucking as much nutrient from the soil. One of the projects this summer is going to be building, hopefully building a compost bin. Yeah, right along the back where the peach tree used to be. Yep. Now the peach tree's gone. We have to build it really nice though, because our neighbor has to look at it. We don't want them getting upset. Just take good care of it. Camouflage it. Eh, I think if we build it kind of like Tim's humanure bins, mm -hmm. those are really pretty those are nice looking. Very nice. So anyway, this is about the time we start getting going on our garden. I know everyone down south has got strawberries and all I know we're, we're late. We have snow. We had snow this morning. On the yeah, ground. this morning we woke up and there was snow on the ground. So that's how you know 
That's how Michigan works. It's a beautiful spring day, and then next thing you know, there's snow. We're expecting 60 degrees on Wednesday. Good. The kids will enjoy the living daylights out of that. I have to make sure they're all in their boots or else and they track mud. If they let us go to the they, if they let us go to the park, I think we should go to the beach. And well, I hear that the state parks are open, but the playgrounds are not. Last time we didn't go on a playground anyway. Yeah, that was Susanna's big discovery. That was since our last podcast. We took a walk in the nature trail, mm-hmm. and we informed the kids that we were not going to the playground. This was before everything was shut down, but we were still being cautious. And um, they were very disappointed, but they had a blast. They found a little floating dock that mm-hmm. was out in the in the swamp swamp reserve. <laughs> they were pretending marsh. to fish off it. Not swamp marsh. It's a swamp. <laughs> They call it a marsh. Reads as far as the eye can see. (laughs) We saw the lake uh, flooding, a whole bunch of land, and it's something I've never seen before. Um, Our lake levels are extremely high. The lake levels are so high that it basically went over the bank and started filling up the swamp, sorry, the marshland on the other side of it. And it's to the point where uh, the wood trail, you know, like a boardwalk type thing, is all submerged underwater. Mm -hmm. I think that happens every spring. We're just not usually out there. It was just really bizarre to see. It looked very, it looked unnatural. Maybe it was fine, but it looked like there was a problem. When you see the lake water encroaching onto the land. Right, well, that's why those, that's why those marshes are full. Mm-hmm. That's filling it that's up for where, the rest of the summer. That's where all the water comes from. Mm-hmm. So, but they did not raise the wood high enough. So I guess they figure if it just, if it submerges it for a couple of days and then it just dries out. Mm-hmm. So we um, we have not made a real big practice of going out there a lot, but our kids are getting bigger and more and more inquisitive, and this is probably a good time to start taking them for more walks. And oh, and they had so much fun running down the sledding hill. Yeah, they just they probably could have spent a half an hour just going up the hill and running <laughs> down the hill again. Let alone what it would be like if we took them out there with snow so they could go sledding. Oh, they'd love it. So I think we're going to have to end it here because it's on time. So? So? I'm going to say goodnight, Lauren. Do you want me to? Say goodnight, Lauren. Goodnight, Lauren. (laughs) See you guys.